Coming up... They will get up to 300 to 400 pounds. We hope you like turtles because there will be a lot of them on today's show. We visit a local education center that's prepared to teach you all about SoFlow marine life, especially turtles. We'll meet Coral, Captain, and crew. Then I get a quick workout in with SoFlow H2O host Olivia Ray and learn about Alzheimer's and breast cancer with these doctors. All that and more is today on SoFlow Health. And welcome to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and today we are at the Meek, which is the Marine Environmental Education Center in Hollywood, where we can learn about sea turtles. If you've been watching SoFlow Health for a long time, we've actually done quite a bit with Nova Southeastern University and the Sea Turtle Rescue Program in Broward County. And you're gonna see some familiar faces here today, but we're also gonna meet some turtles and learn all about what we can do to continue to preserve our environment and what just makes it so cool. So let's head on in, you watch this, and I'll see you with some sea turtles. This is SoFlow H2O host Olivia Ray. Olivia, so good to see you. So good to see you too. Welcome to the gym. Oh, thank you. I'm always here, so yeah. welcome. Yeah, this is your home gym. This is yes. where you work out, and that's why we're meeting you here. Exactly. Uh, no, what I do you like it. about being a legacy? Honestly, it's one of my favorite workouts that I've ever done. I come here with my dad. It's a partner workout, so it's just really exciting and inviting. You have a great community of people, and it's just a lot of motivation and just staying active. This is one of the stations. What are yes. we supposed to do here? So this is basically a squat to an upright row. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to squat down grab the weight and you're gonna bring it up into a row and so you just do these we typically today is like eight reps of these and a uh, little known fact for some people that you're also a personal trainer I am I got certified about two years ago and I've honestly loved it I grew up um, with my mom who was a personal trainer so I was like might as well just go ahead and get certified too yeah take a little break there. I'm getting tired you're, you're used to this kind of thing I <laughs> yeah I know this is so, round two. Here we go. Watch for me. Well, we love that, especially here on SoFlo Health. But exactly. we want to talk about H2O, but we've got more exercises to do, right? Let's go get to it. Let's get it. All right. What do we have here? Okay, so here we are going to do some lateral and front raises. We're going to okay. do them together. So you're going to pick up your weight of choice, uh -huh. and you're just going to go lateral raise to the side, yeah. separate a little bit, and then yeah. to the front. And so we're going to do eight of these total. This Definitely is a lot, is this a is a lot good, easier. It's a good <laughs> shoulder workout. Yeah. Okay, and that's eight reps. Whew. Besides working out and being healthy, you also work on SoFlo H2O. In fact, exactly. you have an episode coming up. When is it? We are super excited. So episode two is coming out on December 10th. Film the whole thing at the boat show, so we have a lot of good stuff coming. What should we expect to see? Me there. Okay, so when it comes to shopping for any water lover in your life, you know there's a long list of stuff that you could get, but we kind of condense that list a little uh, bit for everyone. So yeah. we've got everything from um, center console boats to obviously super yachts. We have a bunch of different onboard gadgets, caddy can, paddle boards, jet skis, water bikes, big boats, little boats, boat shades. We've got mega yachts. We've got jet skis. We've got big boats. We've got little boats. Did I mention boats? Oh yeah, there's definitely boats. Okay. Okay, we got well, a whole lot of that. We get it, we get the picture. You've okay. got SoFlo H2O, there's lots of boats, you're at the boat show, you've got toys, and we're excited to see it. But when is it? It's December 10th at noon, so you can't miss it. Awesome. Well, Olivia, thank you so much for telling us all about your upcoming episode, for working out with me. In fact, Thanks the next time, me. of course, <laughs> and in fact, the next time you see Olivia and me right here at Legacy, we'll be showing you how to do this exercise, which is called what? It's called the Roman chair leg lift. What she said. Well, the Roman chair. There you go. We're going to do a leg lift. This is Kelly, and Kelly, who do we have with us? We have Coral and Captain, and we also have Gretchen here and Sam as well. Hello, Coral everyone. and Captain are our resident sea turtles. Why are they here? So they are actually both non-releasable sea turtles. They sustained um, permanently debilitating injuries. Both of these girls were struck by boats. They have two different kinds of injuries. Captain over there, hers resulted in a permanent flotation issue. So you can see she's kind of floating at the surface there. Mm -hmm. And also some partial paralysis in her rear flippers. 
Coral here uh, was struck on the head and her right front flipper. So if you can get a good look at her, she's missing that right front flipper. She's also yeah, missing her that. right eye. So she's limited in mobility and her vision as well. Oh, and <laughs> what do they do here? So they are kind of now our ambassadors to our local environment. They serve as, you know, kind of examples for their species and a place where people can come and learn a little bit more about what they do. What are they eating, Kelly? So green sea turtles are unique. There's seven species of turtle in the world. Green sea turtles are the only species that are herbivores as adults. So they're feeding mainly on seagrass and algae. Mm -hmm. We can't exactly replicate that here. So they are getting a couple of types of lettuce. They also get bell pepper mm -hmm. and cucumber. We do supplement a little protein as well. So they get some squid and we give them a multivitamin and calcium supplement wow. every day. And what is their outlook like here? Are they gonna be here for a long time? Yeah, their outlook is pretty good here. So these turtles are both very young. We think corals somewhere between five to eight years old, captain somewhere around 20, which is very young for a turtle that have a, has a lifespan of maybe 80 to 100 years. Um, so we will keep them here as long as we are you know, open and able to care for them. Yes, wow. So turtles live almost as long as we do. Yeah, much. their lifespan is very similar. They're also very small still. They don't reach maturity until 30 to 40 years of age. Mm -hmm. um, so these girls have a lot of growing to do. They will get up to 300 to 400 pounds. Right now, coral's only about That's 20 something. pounds. Captain's only about 80 pounds. What are some things that you wish people knew about these turtles? So these turtles in particular um, are considered threatened and endangered around the world. Actually, all seven species of sea turtles are considered threatened and endangered. They don't have a whole lot of natural predators as adults. Their primary threat are human-related causes. So That's that true. is one of the biggest things that I want people to take yeah. away, um, is to learn how we can impact their lives and how we can better their lives. And um, these two are a great example of that because they're here because of because human of humans. Problems. Yeah, exactly. So boat strikes are a really big threat to them. Um, commercial fishing is also a really big threat that most people don't realize. They yeah. can get caught up in commercial fishing gear. Um, ocean pollution, obviously, they love to eat. They will eat anything and everything that they can. Yeah. And what can we do to help? Um, there's a lot of things that we can do. So, for example, with the boating injuries that these guys have, um, you know, obviously there's speed zones in place, so I always say just obey the speed zones. Mm -hmm. If you're out on the water, wearing polarized sunglasses is actually one big thing that people can do. It really helps you see when these turtles are surfacing to breathe. Reducing your plastic use is really one of the single easiest things that people can do. You yeah. know, instead of carrying around a water bottle, use a reusable, get rid of the plastic bags, things like that. It's really something right. that we can do every day that really helps out. And who can come visit? Anybody can come visit. So we are open to the public uh, Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5. It's free to come in. We have a lot of exhibits here, not just our sea turtles. We also have additional animals as well. So anybody's welcome to come visit. Yes. We really enjoy the company. Important health information about breast cancer, Alzheimer's, and our environment is still ahead on SoFlow Health. Focusing on you, innovations in modern medicine, from your team of experts at UHealth, the University of Miami Health System. Geraldine Reese lost her mother to Alzheimer's, and her older sister was recently diagnosed. And she says, what's your name? That hurt me. Interested in her own brain health, she went to the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine's Comprehensive Center for Brain Health, led by founding director and world-renowned neurologist, Dr. James Galvin. Our center is designed to really help us understand how people's brains age and what we could do to potentially improve their brain health. Here at the Comprehensive Center for Brain Health, over 100 participants so far have taken part in a series of cognitive tests, all in an effort to better understand the risks of diseases like Alzheimer's. Through projects like the Healthy Brain Initiative, participants like Alan Schachter undergo tests that challenge the brain and body. You do the alphabet while you're walking and do it backwards. So what makes our brain stronger? Your social activity, your cognitive and mental activity, your physical activity, your diet, and the practice of mindfulness. Geraldine keeps her brain active by writing, including this book dedicated to her mom's journey through Alzheimer's. With the grace of God, we get through it. Good light, bad light. Good light, bad light. Guess what? Good light, bad light. 
you get the picture. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and what makes a good light versus a bad light? Well, if you're a sea turtle, then this is a good light, and this is a bad light. We want our sea turtles to make it to the ocean, not back over here. We want them to stay where they belong, which is in the water. And here's something else. If you choose one of these good lights for the sea turtles, you're also be doing yourself a favor because they attract less insects. We are still at the MEEK, which is the Marine Environmental Education Center in Hollywood, and we're learning all about sea turtles and what we can do to help preserve the environment around them. Later, we'll meet up with Derek because earlier in the show we met some sea turtles, but Derek's got a few other cool things to show us here. But first, you gotta watch this. We're at Conviva Care Center, and today I'm joined by Dr. Jean Lewis. Dr. Jean Lewis, thank you for being with us. I'm happy to be here. Of course, and the topic today is breast cancer. What do we need to know about breast cancer? Nearly one out of eight females are diagnosed with breast cancer, and nearly 50% of those are over the age of 65. And how would somebody know if they have breast cancer? What are, what are the symptoms? The symptoms is usually they find a lump in the breast. They could be skin changes or also changes to the nipples. And once they find out that they have breast cancer, what's the next step? The next step is they definitely have to see their primary care doctors to have a mammogram done. And that's extremely important, of course. Um, who needs to be concerned about this? Who is this for? This is for any female between the age of 40 and 75. And when it comes to uh, treatment here at Conviva Care Centers, how does that work? Um, essentially, the primary care doctor will order um, basic tests, which are usually mammograms and ultrasound, mm -hmm. and usually a biopsy needs to be done to confirm a diagnosis. Now, for seniors especially, sometimes they need assistance as far as uh, communicating with doctors and things like that. Um, do they have patient advocates? How does that work? We do have patient advocates throughout the centers, but our centers are very um, accessible to all the patients, so that usually is not an issue. That's great, because we want to make sure that people don't avoid care just because it's inconvenient. Exactly. And when it comes to outlook for breast cancer, what does that look like? The outlook with early detection, um, the five-year survival rate is 90%. Wow. So it's really important to get checked regularly. Yes. And is that part of the, the protocol here? Um, we um, standard preventative screening. Um, mammograms are usually done um, every one to two years for our patients. And doctor, when it comes to the actual treatment, what sort of options are there for people? So the treatment options include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and sometimes a combination of all. And that's something that you decide here and with the, with, for each patient. It's not one size fits all. It's usually decided between the primary care and usually an oncologist, which is a specialist, is usually involved in that decision. And those are all available here at Kaviva Care Center? Yes, it is. If people would like to learn more, how can they? They can always visit our website or give us a call to request a tour of our centers. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I'm joined by Derek now. You may remember him from the time that we visited you at, was that Nova? At Nova, yes. Yes, we are up at Nova Southeastern University. We were learning about the sea turtle rescue program that you have and taking care of uh, the lost ones and also helping those um, that we've seen here at the center. So what is this part of the center for? So in this building, this is our interpretive center. Uh, we've got a lot of different exhibits, everything from invasive species, uh, talking about some of the amazing coral restoration projects going on at Nova. Um, and then all the way down the road to things like uh, marine debris or um, satellite tracking, things like sharks and sea turtles. Before we move on to the next part of uh, the MEEK, well, what should we know about this? What's the biggest takeaway from this room? Um, the biggest takeaway out of this room is really, you know, just to understand the diversity and the amazing life that we have here in our coastal waters here in South Florida. Yeah, and that's one of the coolest parts about living in South Florida is that we not only have the beautiful beaches right here, but we have Absolutely. centers like this where we can come learn about the environment and hopefully help improve it. Absolutely. All right, we've got more to see, so let's go. Let's go. All right, Derek, we've got a lot of cool stuff in front of us. Where are we now? We are now in our classroom here at the center. Mm -hmm. um, so when we bring in those school groups, education programs, we're at least gonna do a little bit of it up here. We do have a lot of our specimen collection, things like skulls, like our loggerhead skull here, some of the shells like you see in front of me. So this is a real shell? This is a real shell. So Holy this is actually Holy. a green turtle shell, just like Captain and Coral that we have in our pool. Um, and you know, this is a, a bony shell, that's the hard shell turtles. Uh, we do have leatherback turtles here in Florida as well. They're, you know, based on their name, they don't have this bony hard shell like the rest of the sea turtles do. They've got more of a leathery feel with bony ridges um, that you see on that shell. What is this? 
Good question. So this funny looking thing up here is actually a cast of a sea turtle nest. So we wanted to be able to show people what it looks like underground. And so this came from a green turtle nest uh, where one of our surveyors on the beach found a nest that was laid below the high tide line. Mm -hmm. Mom was a little bit lazy for whatever reason. And so the next high tide, that nest would have been washed away. And so the program carefully digs up the nest, moves it to a safe location, reburies it to the same depth and same dimensions that mom had the original nest, but then we filled it with this little expanding foam, came back a day later, dug it out, and so this is kind of what that looks like below ground, where you've got that bulb at the bottom, where the mom will dig down with her rear flippers, scoop the sand out, lay those 80 to 120 eggs, depending on the species, she covers that back up and they sit there for the couple of months uh, while they incubate before they hatch. So, uh, who is the meek for? The meek is for everybody. Uh, we are an open to the public center. We have education programs designed for any age. We tailor our programs to whatever group is here. We're very family friendly here, so we would love to have anybody, any age. Uh, we've got everything from coloring displays to shell sorting stations for the littler kids, um, and then looking at things like our aquariums and, and these these specimens we have on site for for the, you know, the adults and, and older folks as well. Well, we've met Coral and we've met Captain. We saw what people are doing to our environment, unfortunately. Absolutely. And we've seen some cool stuff right here in front of us about the turtles right now. But we've got a few little friends to meet, right? We do have a few more. All right, we'll, well you keep watching SoFlo Health and later on, you'll meet some new friends. Come right back. We still have more scaly sidekicks to meet when SoFlo Health returns. This lettuce fed Coral and Captain earlier right here at the Meek, which is the Marine Environmental Education Center. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and what else is special about this lettuce is how it's grown. In this tank, there are tilapia, and when they eat, they excrete waste, which is gross. But that goes into this part of the tank to fertilize the little pockets of soil, which then produce this lettuce, which is a part of an aquaponics system, which is a hydroponic system up top here, and that creates sustainable lettuce to feed our friends in the water. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I think so. There's more to see here, so make sure you stay with us, but first, watch this. I'm at Conviva Care Center today, and I'm joined by Dr. Maycheck, and we're gonna be talking about Alzheimer's today. So, Dr. Maycheck, what do we need to know about Alzheimer's? Well, first off, the most common early symptom to be aware of is difficulty remembering newly learned information. Other things to look out for is uh, major memory loss, disorientation, uh, and confusion about people, places, time, and events. And what sort of testing is available for somebody to know if they have Alzheimer's? So first off, Alzheimer's is not a self-diagnosis, typically. Um, family, friends first notice some changes in, in their loved one uh, that typically prompts them to seek further evaluation. We'll then conduct tests to assess their critical thinking skills, memory impairments, rule out other causes before making that diagnosis of Alzheimer's. How can we support loved ones who may be going through Alzheimer's? It's difficult, but most importantly, take the time to educate yourself as a caregiver. Be patient with your loved one. Encourage them uh, to be engaged in activities, communicating with the family, um, remembering a healthy diet, sleep, exercise, all of those things are important. That's great. And what are some steps that people can take today? So uh, first off, it's important to talk to your doctor about any of these concerns that you have, uh, but it's important to not overlook the importance of diet, exercise, and just overall well-being. If people would like to learn more about Conviva Care Center, how can they? You can visit our website mm -hmm. or give us a call to schedule a tour of your nearest Conviva Care Center. Our care team is available to help answer any of your health-related questions. Well, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Going to the doctor is getting more and more complicated as time goes on. It used to be a lot simpler. Nowadays, it's a lot more complicated. Lucky for us, I'm here at MyCare Medical with Dr. Wong, who's gonna teach us a little bit about how to make the most out of our doctor's visit. I think we have to be prepared. We prepare, number one, is, is the key. Prepare to ask the right questions. The other P that I put is bring the pharmacy. So I should bring the actual bottles that I have? Absolutely, yes. And last is personalized. 
personalized thing because medicine is one of the areas that one side does not fit all. We must adjust it to your age, to the chronic illnesses you have, and the, all the other medications that you take. So it's important that you bring all the data to us so we can give you the best advice plan. Is that something that MyCare Medical specializes in? We absolutely emphasize that in all our providers. And we have a team besides the physicians. We have physician associates, nurse practitioner, a medical assistant, that we're all engaged in making sure that no one drops the ball. Dr. Wong, how can we find out more about My Care Medical? Visit us on the website, call us for an appointment, and visit one of our office and talk to us. We're very happy to talk to you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Before we meet some more Mary Marine friends, let's check in with SoFlo Home Project host and design expert, Elena Capra. Hey, Elena, what's happening later today on SoFlo Home Project? Hi, Hunter. So today we are giving viewers tips on how to add bold color to their home decor. Later today on SoFlo Home Project, we are gonna share color continuity tips on how to bring that designer touch to your home. Thanks, Elena. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We are once again joined by Kelly. And now we have a new friend with us to wrap up our show. And this is Stella, this correct? Is Stella, yes, absolutely. And tell me about Stella. So Stella is our resident Florida box turtle. Mm -hmm. um, she's been with us for a few years now. She's probably about six years old at this point. Mm -hmm. She's actually a Florida native. She's a Florida box turtle. Mm -hmm. Fun fact about box turtles, they actually have a hinge on their lower shell here. They are able to fully retract into that shell and it kind of snaps shut like a box. Wow. That's where they get their name from. We went and got Stella from upstairs. Yeah. Who else do you have upstairs? So we've got a couple turtles upstairs as well. We also have our Diamondback Terrapin. Mm -hmm. um, they're unique in that they are brackish water turtles. So they live in kind of half fresh, half salt water areas. Mm -hmm. They are found in Florida and throughout the Southeast United States. And then we also have Cashew. He's our red-eared slider. You will actually find red-eared sliders in pretty much any freshwater body throughout Florida, but mm. they're not native. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, they're, yeah, they're a very common pet, mm. and people don't realize how big they get and how much care they are, yeah. so they often release them, so they've kind of become an um, exotic or non-native animal. Yes. So he was uh, found on our doorstep in a mixed nut box. We think somebody found him and thought we could care for him. So they dropped him off before we were open in a mixed nut box, which is why his name is Cashew. <laughs> well, it's a perfect name for Cashew. <laughs> Well, I think Stella might want to roam around here, yeah, so we'll let her do that. we're going to let her go for a little walk. And if people would like to learn more about the Meeker, come visit, how can they? Yeah, absolutely. Stop by any time. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Our social media is a great way to check out any special events that we have coming up. Our handle is Seek the Meek, S-E-E-K, the Meek. Um, also check out our website or just give us a call. Well, Kelly, thanks again. We really appreciate it. Stella's running off here, but we're going to wrap <laughs> up this episode of SoFlow Health. So thank you so much for watching. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowShows.com. You can follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy, until next week, it's goodbye, good health, and great turtles. Next week on SoFlow Health, we talk about the benefits of walking or running on the sand. Olivia teaches us that Roman chairlift that she mentioned earlier, and we'll learn what to do if you lost money investing. It's all here next week, and we'll see you then.